Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Product Familiarization Series. This video covers the Actros, the flagship of the Mercedes-Benz range of commercial vehicles. A range that covers everything from a 2.5 ton Vito van to a 250 ton Titan heavy haulage tractor. The video isn't intended to tell you how to drive, nor will it tell you all about the vehicle. There may be features covered here that you may not have, or you could have features not shown on the model we're using. A comprehensive guide to the controls and switches can be found in the driver's handbook. But what this video will do is help get the best from your vehicle from day one with regard to driver comfort, vehicle performance and fuel economy. Let's make a start and take a look at the vehicle, the Actros. We'll be looking at the vehicle checks, pre-trip checks, the primary switches and controls, and then demonstrate the driving features out on the road. Walking up to the vehicle, looking at the overall condition, a check for any obvious fluid leaks and correct positioning of any fitted air kit, which if not adjusted correctly, will have an impact on the performance of your Actros. The key will unlock the relevant door only, and the vehicle can be unlocked centrally by the switch located in the driver or passenger door. A full 90 degree door opening, along with the grab rails and graduated steps will give you safe access into the cab. Cross cab access is easily accomplished due to the flat floor on the Megaspace model and ample headroom. The Actros offers plenty of storage both below the bunk and above your head to neatly store just about anything you need for your journey. The first thing to do is to log into the digital tachograph with your driver's card. With the ignition switched on, insert your driver's smart card into slot 1. Ensure the arrow is facing forward and the chip is facing up and then follow the on-screen prompts by using the function button. Now we're logged on, let's look at the vehicle checks and external features of the Actros. The graduated steps clearly come into their own on cab exit. Commencing the vehicle checks, we'll start with the windscreen. There are two steps and two grab handles, giving you safe and easy access to clean the whole screen and front view mirror. In the highly unlikely event of the vehicle needing to be recovered, you'll find the towing pin concealed neatly under the step and the number plate covers. On the Actros, all levels and pressures are monitored electronically, and we'll be looking at this shortly. Though, should you ever need to top any of the fluid levels, open the grill by releasing these two catches, and simply pull. Engine oil low? Top up here. The coolant should be topped to the level marked on the header tank, and below this is the 16-litre washer bottle. And remember to consult your handbook for the correct fluid specification prior to correcting any levels. As with all vehicles, we need to carry out other visual checks, such as lenses and lights. Should you need to replace the headlamp bulb, using the tool from the toolbox, loosen the screw at the side here and just swing the lamp assembly out to access the bulbs. The cab tilt pump is located in the near side step well, and the handle for this is stored in the toolbox. External storage is available on either side, accessed by pulling once to release and a second time to open. This is also where you'll find the toolkit. To access the catwalk, collapse the deflector, release the steps, and use the steps and the grab handle to safely and easily access the trailer couplings. There's a coupling light operated by a switch located on the dashboard, which is accessed conveniently from either inside or outside of the cab. And Susie storage is included, keeping them clean and tidy. If you ever require slave starting, there's an easily accessible remote jump point here, saving the aggravation of battery cover removal whilst also allowing the batteries to be mounted remotely under the fifth wheel. Mounted adjacent to this is the AdBlue tank, clearly identified by the blue cab. Again, as with all vehicles, we need to carry out other visual checks, such as wheel security and tyre condition. Tyre pressures should be checked, which, if not set correctly, will have an adverse effect on your economy. Moving along the offside, checking the fuel tank with a lockable cap. Again, external storage on the offside. Raising and lowering the suspension for coupling and uncoupling can be done by using the intelligent level control. By using the remote control, you can raise, and lower the air suspension by using the buttons here. 
to reset to ride height, simply operating the button here. Again, safe entry into the cab, ensuring a three-point contact. The seat is air-sprung and fully adjustable, allowing drivers of all sizes to achieve a comfortable driving position. By using this control, we can lower the seat to aid entry and exit from the cab. Press again to return the seat to the last setting. Using the lever here, between your knees, and the whole seat moves fore and aft to attain the correct distance from the pedals. Seat damping can be adjusted from either a fixed seat or to fully air-sprung. Next to this is seat height, and under the seat squab is seat angle adjustment and a control for adjusting the seat base, allowing upper leg support for drivers who are long in the leg. And here, the control for adjustment of the backrest angle. The column can be unlocked to adjust the reach and rake, and then locked back in once the correct adjustment has been made. For safety, it will self-lock after 10 seconds. The switches and controls are easily accessible and grouped in a logical manner. They're clearly identified by the symbol on the front, and all are fully explained in the driver's manual. The diff lock, which must only be engaged while stationary, and a symbol will then be displayed on the information panel. The hands-free phone system shows the caller's number in the information panel, and using the buttons on the steering wheel, you can take the call. You can also make a call using the up-down to scroll through the phone book. The hill hold feature assists you to pull off an incline without any rollback. Operating this switch will hold the brakes on for two seconds, giving you time to depress the accelerator. An indicator lamp will also show in the dash when active. Here we have the PowerShift 2 features, incorporating extended cruise, which provides an adjustable speed range of 2 to 15 km per hour between set speed and brake cut-in on vehicle overrun. Maneuvering mode restricts the engine to 1,000 RPM for close control. Rocking mode allows rocking of the vehicle, making it easier to get a stuck vehicle moving again. Power mode increases the rev range between gear changes and overrides the fuel saving features on the Actros. And Eco Roll mode assists in saving fuel on the overrun by selecting neutral. Operating the switch will turn off this feature. On the temperature control panel, you have fan speed, air direction, which you push for recycled airflow, and temperature, and the air conditioning switch next to this. The ASR, or anti-slip regulation, prevents drive wheel slip under acceleration, and the system works automatically. Certain conditions may require the system to be switched off by operating the switch. Next to this, returns the vehicle to ride height after coupling, for instance a similar function to that on the remote viewed earlier. Moving to the features above your head, you have interior, reading, and nightlight switches. Touch once to turn on, hold to dim, and touch again to switch off. The auxiliary heater can be operated manually or by timer. The timer function can be set along with the set temperature, which we'll look at in a moment, and the sunroof, open, close. Below is the radio CD, which also incorporates the settings and pairings of the Mercedes-Benz Bluetooth phone system. The door controls incorporate heated mirrors, mirror adjustment left and right, central locking and unlocking, driver and passenger electric windows. The light switch operates side lights, headlights, and pulling it once for front fog lights and again for the rear. There's also an automatic position, which will put on the side and headlights when needed. Looking at the right-hand stalk, you have cruise control, limiter, and engine braking. When at the speed you wish to maintain, pull the stalk towards you and release. Cruise is engaged. Touching the brake will cancel cruise, and to resume the speed last set, move the stalk down towards the dash. The limiter function limits your speed. At the speed you do not wish to exceed, press the button on the end of the stalk until LIM is displayed, and then pull the stalk towards you to set. Moving the stalk down to the first position selects the exhaust brake. Moving it to the second position activates the engine brake. The engine brake operates most effectively when the revs are in the yellow band. We'll be demonstrating these features in more detail out on the road. Across to the left-hand stalk, we have indicators, main